All right, folks, for this last video for 2.3, we're going to focus on a different force from gravity, and that is the normal force. Uh, normal force is responsible in some situations for the phenomenon known as apparent weight. So let's begin. Um, apparent weight is a phrase that we give to how we experience the normal force. So um, you can think of it as like how heavy you feel. Uh, what's really happening is you are getting either pushed on by the ground more than usual or less than usual and that's why you feel heavier um, so apparent weight is represented by the magnitude of the normal force on an object and specifically in order to change an object's apparent weight there needs to be acceleration so we're going to use this as uh that as our like example we're going to ride an elevator here's a person in an elevator when they are in the elevator standing still uh, there are two forces acting on them their gravity force acting down uh, and then the normal force acting upward <clears throat> we will always have up as the positive direction um, and that's going to help us review kinematics more or less so there are six situations that an elevator gets itself into when you get on an elevator you are at rest the elevator hasn't started to move yet and um, so there's no velocity and also there's no acceleration so when you are at rest the net force on you is zero um, the normal force and the gravity force balance um, because you're not moving so the normal force is equal to mg in other words your apparent weight and your actual weight are the same uh, apparent weight and actual weight are the same um, and so that's simple that's how you feel almost all the time if your body is not accelerating you feel normal um, the ground is pushing up on you a normal amount um, okay the next thing that happens not the next thing but one of the other things that can happen in an elevator is that it can move at constant speed and you would notice this in the middle of your travel if you started on your way up uh, to a higher floor in the middle of that journey the elevator is traveling at constant speed the like motor is pulling on it so that it does that um, and constant speed is the other simple scenario now um, if you're moving at constant speed that means your velocity is not changing and that means that you have no acceleration and so the net force on you is also zero uh, remember Newton's first law at being at rest and moving at constant velocity are equivalent situations in terms of acceleration and forces so this is a different sort of equilibrium one where you're moving um, and so your apparent weight is your normal weight you feel again like you usually do if you're moving at constant speed and then everything gets interesting after that <clears throat> so if you get in an elevator at the ground floor the first thing that happens is you move upward and you speed up as soon as you start moving in order to get moving you have to speed up words uh, we're going to use the words here to review kinematics so moving upwards if up is the positive direction then that's a positive velocity if you are speeding up then your positive velocity is getting larger and so that is a positive acceleration so you start with a positive velocity and that positive velocity increases all right so you have a positive acceleration what does that matter so according to newton's second law net force on you equals mass times acceleration the net force on you is equal to the normal force minus the force of gravity and that's equal to mass times acceler acceleration I'm going to switch things up a bit if acceleration is positive then the normal force minus the force of gravity the value of that net force is greater than zero right because acceleration is positive then mass times acceleration is also positive so this quantity of normal force minus gravity is greater than zero uh, something that comes up a lot that's a source of confusion is the phrase net force the net force on this person is their normal force minus the force of gravity the net force on this person is also equal to mass times acceleration but that's just the number of the net force 
the net force is caused by the difference between the normal force and the gravitational force. Anyway, uh, our final conclusion is that the normal force on this person is greater than the weight of that person. So their apparent weight is greater than their actual weight. When the elevator starts to push you upward, it's like your body's getting squished down to the floor by the floor of the elevator. Um, and so you feel heavier. And that's why you have a positive acceleration. And so it's going to cause the floor of the elevator to support you more. Uh, moving up and slowing down. So at the end of your ride, if you're going from the first floor to the third floor, once you get near the third floor, the elevator has to slow down. Now you're still moving upward, so you still have positive velocity. But you're slowing down. Your positive velocity is getting closer to zero, so you must have negative acceleration. <clears throat> uh, now that we've done this once, we can kind of speed through all of the Newton's Law stuff. Uh, I really wanted you to review kinematics, and so um, I'm going to have you pause the video a couple times and think about the last couple scenarios. Anyway, if you have a uh, negative acceleration, the net force on you is always going to be whatever the normal force is minus the force of gravity. The normal force can change, right? Because depending on how the elevator moves, it can either push on you or stop pushing on you. In this case, the acceleration is negative. That means mass times acceleration is negative. Um, actually, let me write that. So it's equal to mass times acceleration. Mass times acceleration in this situation will have a negative value. And so the difference between the normal force and the force of gravity will be a negative number. That means that the normal force on you is going to be less than the force of gravity. Uh, we can make, and you feel lighter as a result. This is where you like get butterflies in your stomach because especially if you're in a skyscraper, you're going up at a very large speed and then the elevator stops pushing on you uh, as much. And so you kind of like float your way to the end of the ride um, and you feel lighter. So what's happening is the elevator is slowing down and it takes a, a, a split second for your body to catch up to it. And so the floor of the elevator doesn't have to push on you as much because it's slowing down. Okay, uh, I think it'd be a good idea for you to pause the video right now and try and assign values to velocity and acceleration, positive or negative velocity, positive and negative acceleration, and same thing there. So pause. Okay, so if you're moving downward, that is a negative velocity. And if you are speeding up, well, then your velocity is getting further from zero. So if you have a negative velocity, and your velocity is getting further from zero, you need to have negative acceleration you need to have that velocity become more negative. Um, this will be at the top of your journey, right? So you uh, are at the third floor, you're going to head down to the first floor and the elevator starts to move. It starts moving downward and it starts to speed up, which sounds scarier than it is. Um, if the normal force minus the force of gravity is equal to mass times acceleration and acceleration is negative, and the normal force minus the force of gravity is less than zero. Um, the gravitational force on you is bigger. The normal force on you is smaller than it usually is. And so the normal force is less than the force of gravity. Um, so that's kind of interesting, right? Like moving up and slowing down puts you in the same feeling as moving down and speeding up. Now, elevators don't have typically the same acceleration for all of these events. Um, so you might feel the effects a little bit more in certain locations on your ride. Uh, last but not least, moving down, slowing down, negative velocity. If you're moving down, if you're slowing down, your velocity is getting closer to zero. So that means that your velocity has to go up to get to zero. And that's positive acceleration. Uh, we've seen positive acceleration before. That's when the normal force is greater than your weight. And so when you get to the bottom of your ride, uh, the floor of the elevator pushes up on you more aggressively, and that makes you feel like you're getting squished into the floor. So we will cover apparent weight again when we study circular motion, but that's really like the big primer for, for this concept.